Hello everyone, welcome to this video. We're going to tackle a attack that everyone's talking about nowadays on the security community, which is found in all versions of the Outlook desktop app on any Windows system. It's so famous that TryHackMe contains a room to educate everyone about this vulnerability. Let's get started. For those of you who don't know TryHackMe, I guess you should just Google tryhackme.com. If you go to the learn menu, then go to search. There are loads of uh, challenges that you can choose from. And here you just can type in TLM and you will find it right here. Click on it and you will land on the room. It's pretty well explained, very extensive. Thanks to the creators of this room, essentially TryHackMe, Dex01, Munra, Dr. Gonzo. So we're going to go through the introduction just to explain the general uh, topic to the public. Um, generally, in TryHackMe, you have the possibility to start uh, machines. Um, so when you click on uh, Start Machine, you will then have access to this vulnerable machine. Um, so let's do that. First of all, we need to join the room and then we can hit Start Machine. It's going to take a little bit of time to boot up. The IP address should be visible in about a minute. Okay, while it's running, um, we can uh, connect to this uh, VM using RDP or using the split uh, view, which we're going to use now. Once uh, the VM is up, we can connect to it and uh, get started. If you scroll to the top and click on show split view, you can see here that the machine is booting. We can also um, start the attack box. This is the box that we're going to simulate as the attacker's uh, machine. So let's use the attack box, start the attack box. And as you can see here, we have a new tab, Try Hack Me attack box. Okay, no answer is needed. Click just on complete and uh, let's go to the next task. You need to understand the theory behind this uh, vulnerability. Essentially, it exists in the appointment feature and precisely in the reminder path. That's the sound that can be played. You can specify an audio file played when a user gets a notification reminder. By the way, you can go ahead and uh, follow the steps on your own. I highly encourage you to do so. But for those of you who don't have currently access to their machines or they just want to chill, then feel free to follow along. So as you can see, we can specify the uh, path or the sound that should be played. And as uh, attackers, um, it's always a good idea to think outside the box. So why not trying uh, a UNC path? So this is how it looks like. And essentially, this is um, the IP address of the attacker or the host name, and then the path to the sound file that should be played on the victim's machine. So when the victim receives the email, the uh, sound will be fetched from the uh, attacker's machine. The way it works is that SMB protocol will be used, but if SMB protocol is not available, like it's filtered out on the firewall, we can also use a WebDAV enabled web server. If you do so, then in this case, the path would be like this. Nothing really different here apart from the port number that should be prepended with an at symbol. So once the attacker receives that request, it comes along with the net NTLM v2 hash. This is a special hash that penetration testers abuse in internal penetration tests. But if the password of the user, the victim in this case, is weak, then we can crack these hashes. Now, in the introduction, it says here that once an infected email arrives in the user's inbox, the attacker can obtain sensitive net NTLM v2 credential hashes. Once malicious actors have those hashes, they can get a user's credential, authenticate to their system, and escalate privileges. Um, this is kind of debatable. It depends on the user's privileges. So, if we take, for example, 
uh, domain admin as a target and then we send them a malicious email with an appointment, we will get their NetNTL v2 hashes. We can relay them if we are inside the network, but it doesn't say here how we can get the user credentials. Uh, it's not straightforward. So now that we understand the uh, logic behind the attack, we're going to craft a malicious appointment. So the first thing we need to do is set up Responder. This is a very well-known tool that is available on Kali. Here we are on the attack box. And uh, what we can do is open the terminal and type Responder. Uh, we need to figure out the interface name. So in this case, that would be ENS5 because the others are just Docker and local host. So responder dash I E N S five. So this will uh, listen on, let's see here. What we are interested in, in this case is the SMB SMB server, which is running here. Okay. Now we are waiting like listening on the interface for any incoming requests. And now we need to trigger that request to capture the net NTLMV2 hash. And to do that, we can go ahead to the victim's machine. This is just for testing purposes. So click on the tab that corresponds to the vulnerable machine. Okay, we don't need any credentials because we've used the uh, split view feature of TryHackMe. And now we can go to Outlook. So click on the app right here. Now here it says that we can go to the reminder once we create an appointment and then we can specify the sound. The problem is that when you specify it from the user interface like this, um, Outlook like tries to sanitize that. Um, we don't want that. So we're going to directly use the Outlook Spy plugin so we need to install the plugin. So that's Outlook Spy, double click on it. While it's installing, it says here that uh, we can directly set values to the appointment using this plugin. So the path to the sound file is this uh, reminder sound file. And we also need to set the reminder override default to true in order for our sound file to be taken into consideration. It's taking a lot of time. Maybe we need to close the Outlook app. We also need to set the reminder play sound to true so that our sound gets played. Yes, we want to run this. Preparing to install. It's taking forever. Okay, let's click next. I accept the agreement. Next, next, install. Let's finish. And now if we open up Outlook, we should see the tab Outlook Spy. All right. Now we want to create a appointment. So we can go to Home, New Items, and then Appointment. And here we can specify anything like Meeting, Now. And we can specify the start and end time. And using the Reminder option, we can click on Sound. And here, as you can see, we can specify the sound, okay? I want to set it to zero minutes so that it triggers right away. And here we can just print whatever we want. Now, if we inspect with Outlook Spy the current item, now if we go to script, so that would be appointment item dot reminder override default equals true. So let's do that. Appointment item dot what was the name reminder override default let's set it to true we want the same thing but for the reminder play sound this time and here we need to specify our attackers path right so the IP address of our attackers box is 10 10 I guess 119 and 17 and then some path some random path it doesn't matter really path here i just maybe need to add wave for the extension of the audio and then 
we need to just add one last parameter, reminder, sound file. Oh, so the sound file is the one we should put here. And then reminder play sound should be equals to true. Let me just verify that I've done everything correctly. Yes, I guess so. So with that said, let's run that appointment item. Oh my God, I just forgot the N in the appointments. Let's run now. Now, if we go back to our properties, we can see that indeed we have override default play sound are set to true and the play sound file is indeed pointing to our attacker's machine. Okay, let's close that for now. Let's save it. Save and close. And so now we are we have the reminder and let's see in our attacking machine we indeed have the net ntlmv2 hash of the administrator. So we already know the password for this user, which is nothing but if we go to introduction, it's password 321. And so we can uh, crack this hash and get the user's password in plain text. Well, maybe there is hashcat right here. Let's verify. I'm not sure. Hashcat, yes, it's here. So let's uh, put that inside a file. Let's call it hash.txt. And let's uh, paste in our hash. So hashcat dash M6600 and then the hash. And then we need the word list. Um, I'm just going to type something like pass, password, and password two, three, three, two, one. Now let's run it. It's a very small word list, so it doesn't make sense, but it's just a test here. Normally you should have your own huge list of words, probably also adding some custom words from your customer, maybe from a website. We've already seen that in a previous video, make sure to check that out. So as you can see here, status here was correct, saying cracked, and the password is indeed password 321. Cool. So now that we have reproduced the issue locally, we can try to send an appointment to another, to a user remotely. Um, so this is what we're going to do in the next video. As always, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.